Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is a little bit different. We're a little bit off topic from what I normally post, but I wanted to share with you um, some tips and pointers in passing your electrical examination to become a journeyman, okay? This is something that I've been trying to do, you know, for the last two or two to four years now. I've been studying hard, trying to pass my tests because with that, with that journeyman's license, you're able to get a bigger raise and more opportunities. So I passed my test this past Saturday, and I know there's people out there that might be interested in becoming an electrician to better your career. And I just want to help someone today, you know, who's looking to, you know, get into the electrical field and passing their test. Or for, for any apprentices out there right now who's having a hard time passing the test to become a O2 journeyman, O1 journeyman, whatever it is that you're trying to reach. So today, I just want to give you some tips and some pointers on how to pass your journeyman electrical examination. Stay tuned. Let's dive right into it. Tip number one. When you get your NEC book, get you some tabs, all right? These tabs are very useful. You can find them on Amazon for very cheap. They help you flip to the exact article that you are searching for when you have a question on the test. Also, make your own personal tabs, but make sure they're professional like these. So what I did is I got a label printer and I was able to print out my own labels and stick them in here. Because if you bring sticky notes as tabs, they will rip those out. So make sure if you do make your own personal tabs that they look professional like these. It's a good idea because even though there's a lot of tabs here, there's certain few areas where you can make your own references for your own personal reasons, all right? GACI, Boxville, required outlets are all tabs that I decided to make on my own. All right, tip number two, get yourself one of these books. This is the Mike's Holtz version. There's other versions out there like DeWalt or the Tom Henry's, but get you an exam prep book, okay? Because what this is gonna do for you, is gonna help you to learn how to navigate the NEC using the keyword index process, all right? So this book here in specific, if you go to the back of the book, it has over 500 test questions, all right? So these questions are literally identical to what the questions are gonna be like on your exam, okay? And the more of these questions you answer in this book, the more you're gonna get familiar with using your keyword index process, the more you're gonna get familiar with navigating this thing, all right? So that would be tip number two. Get yourself an exam prep book. This helped me a lot. Tip number three for passing the RCW WAC portion of the test, there's gonna be 17 questions in your state for state laws and regulations. This book is a cheat code. This is the called the Key Term Index book for the RCW WAC. To be honest, guys, I went in there and I just brought this book in there. I didn't even study this book because that's how easy it is to find the answers on the test when you have this book in your hands. So get yourself a key term index book for passing the RCW WAC portion of the test. Like I said, there's 17 questions and this thing literally is all alphabetical order. It is so easy to navigate. I found pretty much all the answers for the WAC RCW with just this book and I didn't even study the book. All right, so get this, it is a cheat code. Tip number four, learn Ohm's Law. So Ohm's Law may sound intimidating at first, but if you just look at Ohm's Law, you will see it is very easy. It is basic uh, multiplication, basic division, all right? So go on YouTube, search Ohm's Law, how to solve it, and you'll see what I'm talking about. It is very easy to learn, it's very easy to do. There will be Ohm's Law questions on that test, I guarantee it. I took the test twice, both tests had at least four or five Ohm's Law related questions. So make sure you learn Ohm's Law because the first time I took the test, I didn't know Ohm's Law. And that's probably why I failed it by one question. Because when it came to the math portion of the test, I skipped through it and I kind of guessed on those. I wish I would have learned Ohm's Law the first time. So that's tip number four, learn Ohm's Law. Tip number five. You guys, seriously, you have to get efficient and good at using the keyword index process. So I'm gonna briefly explain what that is real quick. 
for example, right? Let's open this up and let's go to the back of the book and see like a test question. So the keyword index process is really simple. This is how you do it. So we have a question right here, right? This is a question that you know, is going to be likely to be on the test or the format of the question is this is what the test is going to be like. Receptacle outlets are required for kitchen countertops and work surfaces blank inches or wider. And then you have A, B, C, or D, 12, 15, 18, or 24 inches, all right? So the keyword index process, we're going to look at this question and we're going to find out the overall theme of what they're trying to ask us. So we got receptacle outlets, okay, and we got kitchen countertops and work surfaces. So there, there's two key terms there pretty much. There's outlets and there's work surfaces, kitchen countertops, all right? So using the keyword index process, you're then gonna read that question, go to your NEC, and you're gonna find the index tab. And once you open up the index, it'll be all alphabetical order. Those two key terms that you picked out, work services, kitchen, or uh, receptacles, outlets, pick one of those. So let's go to um, receptacle outlets, all right? So it's an alphabetical order, flip to your R's. All right, so we found receptacles in the index. Under receptacles, there's a whole bunch of subtopics, all right? Like agricultural buildings, grand circuits, configurations, definitions, disconnecting means. There's a whole bunch of subtopics under receptacles. Scroll under receptacles until we find something that relates to work surfaces and kitchen countertops. So let's go ahead and try that right now. Scrolling down. Okay, under receptacles, I see outlets, and it's pointing me to 210.50, all right? So under receptacles, I didn't see work surfaces, or I didn't see kitchen countertops, but under receptacles, I did see outlets, and outlets was in the question. The question was receptacle outlets, blah, blah, blah. So if I go to outlets, under receptacles in the index, it's telling me to flip to 210.50. So you go to your tabs, 210.50, okay, 210.50, so that would be under branch circuits, the article 210 is branch circuits, go to 210.50, okay, and sure enough, 210.50 says required outlets. And we scroll down under required outlets, read the black bold letters until you see something that says countertops and work services or kitchens. Scroll, 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 floor receptacles, other outlets, spacing, mall spaces. Oh, right here, countertops and work surfaces. Let's go ahead and read it. In kitchen, pantries, breakfast rooms, dining rooms, and similar areas of dwelling units, Receptacle outlets for countertop and work surfaces. Okay, those those words were in the key terms in that question. Countertop and work surfaces that are 12 inches or wider shall be in accordance with 250.52. So if we go back to the question and see what they were asking us, we found out that 12 inches is the correct answer. So receptacle outlets are required for kitchen countertops and work services, A, 12 inches and wider. Guys, that's just one example of the keyword index process. I'm not the best at explaining it, but just know how to find the overall theme of the question, what they're asking for. Pick out a few very important keywords in that question. Go to your index, start with one of those keywords, see where that takes you and that's that's the process all right learn the keyword index process and learn it fast learn it efficient and just some extra side notes for taking your test study 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 it hard okay matter of fact take two days off before your test i took thursday and friday off and i took the test saturday morning 
those two days really helped me a lot because sometimes when you go to work you're kind of exhausted and you gotta sit in traffic on your way home maybe you got kids at home maybe you got other stuff you have to do so your studying time can sometimes be very limited or very distracted so take two days off before your test and really use those days to study hard all right also if you fail the first time don't be discouraged all right because they print out your results paper and you can study the articles that you did worst on so this is what it looks like when you fail your test all right so pretty much has all the topics in which they had on the on the test introduction general requirement services wiring methods blah 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 right they tell you how many questions they had in each of those articles and they show you how many of those questions you got correct what you want to do if you fail your test you'll get this paper highlight or circle the articles that you didn't do that well on the ones you did the worst on right like for example article 300 to 398 wiring methods there's seven questions on wiring methods on the test i only got four of those correct so that's what i'm a circle i'm gonna go back home and study article 300 to 398 i'm gonna study that article all right so that's just an example um if you fail your test the first time don't be discouraged because you're guaranteed to pass it the second time if you're able to take that sheet home and study those parts that you were kind of weak in all right and I suggest if you do fail, schedule your retest right away, okay? Because you don't want to take too much of a break before taking your test again, because it's still fresh in your mind. You know the process. You know kind of now the questions they're going to ask. So once you fail the first time, after two weeks, you can schedule again. Schedule it right away and study hard for those next two weeks, all right? So guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope this video helped at least one of you guys out today. If you're interested in the electrical field or if you're just trying to pass your examination to become an O2 journeyman, O1 journeyman, I hope this um, video helped you today. And like I said, if you fail the first time, don't be discouraged. Take this piece of paper home, find out the topics you were the weakest in, study those topics, retake the test right away so it's fresh in your mind. When you pass your test, it looks like this. You'll get these two papers here, one for the NEC and theory book, one for the RCW WAC. This is what it looks like when you pass the test. So I guarantee you that you guys will be able to pass the test, like whether it's the first time, second try. Don't give up. Keep studying. Keep your head up. And I just hope this video helps someone today. Go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. And I appreciate you guys a lot. Take care and have a blessed day. Peace.